I was wondering if gastrointestinal problems, bedwetting, these kind of problems that get developed from childhood abuse, is that valid? Well, there's a certain amount of that that is Because you talk in your book yeah. about a story yeah. about well, this family. Yeah, if you look at the research on enuresis, uh, which is bedwetting, it's okay. our proper term for bedwetting, uh, it's not what you would think. I think that a lot of parents who have children with the bed think, oh my, they must be overly stressed, what can I do? And, and may even go to a physician asking for advice and help related to that problem. Uh, reality is that's not typically the problem at all. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's not the problem. But post-traumatic stress yeah. disorder. If you have extreme, if we're talking mm. very, very extreme, and if you're talking close in time, so uh, I, I mentioned the Ganains, for example, right. in that the book. Right. That was a disturbing yeah. story. Yeah, it is a disturbing story, and I mention them because they're such a famous case. They've been used so often to promote the idea that schizophrenia is all genetic. All right. Okay. But all four of these girls, mm -hmm. we're talking about the Ganain quadruplets. Mm -hmm. All four of the girls develop schizophrenia. And the argument is you can't have four out of four unless oh, okay. it's, genetic. it's genetic. Okay. So it proves it's genetic. It does not prove it's genetic. When you look closely at their childhoods, it is amazing. It's one of the most abusive stories I've ever heard. Uh, their father sexually abused these girls. Mm -hmm. uh, their father would not allow them to dress except how he wanted them to dress. He would watch them dress every day. Even after they reached puberty, he watched them dress every day. He'd watch them use the toilet. He carried a gun through the home. He was extremely paranoid. He was an alcoholic and a severe diabetic. He would not allow his wife to write her mother without inspecting those letters. He would read the letters before mm -hmm. they were sent off. It was a, just an incredible home life, a terrible amount of abuse. And consequently, yeah, all four of the girls developed schizophrenia. You cannot argue that that's genetic based on that case. Mm -hmm. Those girls had a life that was just torture from beginning to end. Okay, so then the question is, can mental illness be genetic or is it based on experience? There is absolutely no evidence that it is genetic. There, this, this is the, the golden grail. This is what will make someone extremely famous. It will put his name or her name into every psychology textbook and medical textbook from now to eternity. This is what will make someone win a Nobel Prize. Consequently, it has been pursued countless studies, I'm talking mm -hmm. literally thousands upon thousands upon thousands mm -hmm. of studies, millions upon millions of dollars have been spent pursuing what everyone knew to be true, that there's a genetic link there. It has never been found. The studies that say, here's a link, have been discredited. I discuss that in my book, show why some of those twin studies prove that there's not a genetic link. This is silliness. So it's environment? It is absolutely environment. The factors related to schizophrenia are many, mm -hmm. they're common, they're across decade, they're across country. We know what the factors are. Mm -hmm. I list those in the book. Uh, it's important to recognize that it is not simply genetic. If it is, it means you can't do anything about it. It means <laughs> right. that if you're born into the wrong family, you're destined to lose your mind. Okay. At least you're at increased risk of that. It's a very negative view of mental health. A much more positive view is my view that says, yes, there are risk factors, but you can make choices. You can take the steps necessary to have good mental health and have a wonderful life. Everyone can choose to make those steps. Everyone can have a good life. So the post-traumatic stress that comes from being in a dysfunctional, abusive family, that can be overcome is what It you're can be overcome. It is true that stress of the worst kinds mm -hmm. can lead to very severe reactions, as it did in the Ganane's case. Uh, when we look at battlefield amnesia, you have people who go to the battlefield. We, we have many accounts of this right. from wars of 100 years ago, of 50 years ago, and more recent, where they go to the battlefield, especially when those were in the foxholes. World War II had a lot of this. They're in the foxholes. They know they may die today. They see their buddy die on the right. They see a buddy die on the left. They're not killed, mm -hmm. but when they're brought back to the rear, mm -hmm. they don't know who they are. They've uh -huh. lost their mind completely. They have amnesia. Okay. So why? So ex extreme stress. It's happened over and over. Now, does that mean that that person is going to have a mind that's destroyed the rest of their life? No. Those people typically will get their minds back. It's a temporary reaction. Mm -hmm. In fact, very often, generals have made a decision. We'll let our men go out to the front line until they're beginning to lose their minds. Mm. Oh, really? 
We'll bring them to the rear. We'll give them a few days of recovery. Now they're back to normal. Now we'll send them back to the front line. Mm -hmm. And there's a real debate. Should we do it that way? Mm -hmm. Or should we allow them to really get their minds strong again? Take them out of battle for a more extended period of time. Or should we allow them out just for a few days, just to where they're functioning well again, can shoot that rifle again, and send them back? Okay. So there's that debate going on. So no, stress can do tremendously harmful things to the mind, but it doesn't mean it's genetic, doesn't mean it's lifelong. Mm. Thank you very much. You're welcome.